Hey everybody, Fifth Horseman here, playing more Kerbal Space Program, and as one of you mentioned on the forums, uh, I think it was Berendel, I honestly don't remember who it was, and I don't feel like checking right now because I'm lazy, uh, this guy does not have enough Delta V with his 202 meters per second, it was 203 last episode, but I used one of them, uh... He, this guy does not have enough Delta V to get to Gilly based on the orbit that you saw last episode. However, um, in the spirit of it's not cheating if it's fixing a bug, I cheated to fix a bug. And I made this guy's orbit uh, a lot closer to Gilly's orbit. Um, because really, we had done all this before, and the game's like, nah, I'm not going to screw up your orbit uh, for you. So, um, I, I don't know what's going on, and I'm hoping it's not game-breaking, because uh, I, I don't want the game to be broken. But it's kind of looking like possibly if I leave any any ships out in orbit around things, the game's going to just toss them around. Uh, I, I don't know why, um, but that's just the way it works. So we're going to go with this orbit. We're going to assume that Gilly kind of flung us out uh, slightly differently than we should have been. Uh, and the 203 meters per second should be enough uh, to, to get this thing going. Now, at our apoapsis here, we are going to make a tiny little burn to bring both our... Um, Ascending nodes and descending nodes more in line with Gilly. Now, that's also going to... You know what? I don't think I'm going to do that. At periapsis here, I'm going to burn down and radially and down. Oh, look at that. It's already got us an encounter here. So we're just going to go with this encounter. And that's 47 meters per second. To get us this encounter, let's see if we can tweak it and make it a little bit better. Now, things are going to be very <laughs> small as far as this is concerned. This doesn't affect it at all. So we're just going to do that. 34 by 32 gives us 47 meters per second. That'll leave us about 150 to slow down at Gilly. And if 150 isn't enough to slow down at Gilly, I don't know what will be. There we go. Our second maneuver node is 122. That will get us into orbit. And once you're in orbit, you can land on Gilly with, with I don't know, 10 or 15 meters per second. I could probably just land on it, <laughs> slow down enough to land. I could probably just come in to crash, to be honest. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and do these maneuvers. I'm sorry if anybody thinks that this is super duper cheating or whatever. I, I literally don't care anymore. Um the game is cheating, so I'm just going to cheat back. Uh, I am I am still going to going to force myself to to do things when the game's not cheating, but when the game is throwing me bull, <laughs> no offense, uh, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna accept it. That's just the way it works. And we have to uh, once we land, we have to get everything out of this container and throw it away because it is uh, part of Kerbal Attachment System that's going to be removed when it is, Kerbal Attachment System is updated to uh, play better with Kerbal Inventory System. Don't know exactly how long this burn's going to be. Somebody else mentioned that Kerbal Engineer has a next burn time. Uh, if I didn't have 30 seconds before, I would, I would check it out. But I'm just going to hit the gas at 30 seconds and see what it says here. 19 seconds, so we'll go down to about 10. It's actually probably closer to 17 seconds. Consider we're going to be burning away a decent amount of our fuel, so I'll go down to I'll go down to nine or eight or seven. There we go. Oh, too much. Do I have RCS on this guy? I don't think I do. No, I don't. Okay, so we're going to turn around completely. He also has very poor turning angle, but it is a ground base, so I think it's acceptable for him to have a poor turning angle. Actually, you know what? I want to fix this at the descending node anyway, or the ascending node anyway, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's snap this to the ascending node, and it's 1.6 degrees. That will, oh, uh, look at that. Not only does it does it make it perfect, but it gets us the encounter we want. Almost. <laughs> There we go, and I bet you this is going to be an awesome Gilly encounter. Okay, yeah, oh, this is looking good. Okay, if we just tap this thing, that'll bring us in really close to Gilly. Now, we, now again, we don't want to get too close. So this is definitely the, the maneuver we want to do, and it is... Uh, we better aim at the maneuver node. It's a six-second burn. It is very short. It's worth the 15 meters per second to get us... We're going to be down to about 140 when this thing's done. Oh, I should probably, while we're here... Uh, let's see. This would probably be... 
Vessel. Let's try orbital. Time to maneuver burn. Yeah, let's put that one in there and see what happens. Telling me I got an hour and some odd minutes. Probably shouldn't be in surface. <laughs> it should be in vessel. But really, these these don't matter anyway. And I'm and I I still want to make a uh, one of these a uh, HUD with with all this information on it, so I can drop the window. Three, two, one, zero, go. And done. And we just want regular stability assist. And I think, did we go too far? No. Let's go ahead and get this guy on the other side of Gilly. Now we're going to burn down. To get into orbit, it's going to cost us 97 of our 142 meters per second. Now we could... Just aim at the at the surface. We could we could actually just stop right here for 112. That'll leave us a mere 30, which uh, frankly is scary, even even on Gilly. Um, I would much rather just aim at the surface. Let's turn on trajectory mode. Uh, make sure it's in body fixed mode, and uh, let's aim radially inward. Uh, we could also aim retrograde. I don't know if, if it's better to aim retrograde or radially inward. Let's let's see what... If we aim retrograde and slow down now... See, that's going to take 100 meters per second. And then here, in order to... Uh, come on, game. Seriously? Okay, I'm going to quick save and reload. Okay, and then to stop here, it's still not going to let me do it. It'll let me add a maneuver here. There, okay, I don't know what, what that means. But to completely stop here, after we slow down 100 meters per second, is going to be 26. 126, that gives us an entire... Uh, <laughs> what is that? That gives us an entire... Uh, 13 or so. I don't know. I can't do math, but it's it's less than 20 meters per second of of leeway. So that's that's plan A. Is the slow down until you get it planned. Plan B is to radially I know about this. Plan B is to radially inward so that we crash here. I'm sorry. Connect here and then here slow down. I never knew that there was this dot here that shows you where on your trajectory you are. That's pretty cool. Slow down here to zero-ish. And this is going to take 20 plus 118. So it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, really. 20 and 118 is 138. Uh, it's actually a little bit worse to do, the ra to do the radial. Huh. Okay, well, let's burn retrograde then until we have a collision. Okay, that should do it. Now, let's plan for this actual collision. Now, I know map mode is very inaccurate, especially on Gilly. Uh, but we should still be able to, 33 meters per second out of 48. This is, like, ridiculous. Um, let's aim at this maneuver node. Actually, let's, uh, yeah, let's stay aimed at the maneuver node. And here we go. No quick saving now. This is this is the real thing. Yeah, and actually, it would have probably been smarter to have gotten into orbit and then uh, ditched this guy. But I think this is going to save a little bit of fuel, just not having to not having to orbit, circularize, and all that stuff. I I don't think so now that I'm thinking about it, but I thought so at the time. Looks like we got a fairly poor landing spot, but really and honestly, I don't care. Actually, it looks like we got a good landing spot. We might be at the top of that hill. Okay, we have a 14 second burn. So really we care about our See, it's not telling us when we're going to when we're going to collide with Gilly because I don't think it knows. 
Not a big deal. We have a surface thrust away to 48.6. We are traveling 29 meters per second. We're coming in on this quite flat area, which is awesome, considering I didn't plan for it at all. I think I'm going to retract all the solar panels in case we flip over or something. Not that we would, but if we do, I would like the option. Uh, we have 48 meters per second of fuel in our tank. And we're traveling at about 30 meters per second. I really can't imagine we're going to be traveling more than uh, 35 by the time we get to the ground. Because Gilly is just so ridiculously light. And in fact, I'm just going to turn this off. We are going to go directly retrograde. Coming in, oh, I, I, I don't know if I could have planned this better. Maybe maybe landing over here would be slightly better than landing right here, but I don't even know. It's really hard to tell the slope of the ground by, by eye on Gilly because there's so much surface curvature. <laughs> I mean, this could be a 30-degree slope. It could be perfectly flat. I honestly don't know until I get down there. But the thing is, is I kind of want to kind of want suicide burn this, which is a, a ridiculous thing to talk about on Gilly because... Um, Really, we only have to cut about 20 meters per second so that the uh, so the landing gear survives. Actually, I think the landing gear is good up to about 15 or so. I honestly don't know. But, um, yeah, I really wish it would tell me where we're going to go or where, where when we're going to hit, I should say. But we can kill 30 meters per second fairly quickly. So I'm going to start right there because I just realized we're not going to be able to kill it fairly quickly because we've got a decent amount of burn time. Uh, yeah, I don't care about the maneuver now. Once we get down to 10 meters per second, I am killing the velocity and we are just going to coast this thing down. We have to basically sip at fuel as we slowly come down here. Oh, maybe the HUD would help. I don't think so. Yeah, this looks like it might be a pretty bad slope, but really our, our reaction wheels should keep us up, even though they're fairly poor. And we've lost our hold retrograde. 10 meters per second. We, are tr we have 27 in the tank. We can always relocate this guy later, once we've uh, drilled some carbonite. <laughs> and actually drill drilled ore. And I just realized I haven't looked to see... Uh, We're in orbit mode, of course. <laughs> oh boy. We and we can't time warp fix. Come on. Oh, this was this was very ill advised here. I'm just turning on regular SAS. Ugh, we have 15 meters per second to fix this. Ah, I just hit X. We have 13 meters per second to fix this. But we're we're at least traveling upward now. Whew. Okay, we should be good. And actually, this ground looks very, very flat. Very, very flat. And honestly, I, I almost want to toss the Kerbals out. If I wasn't afraid that they would uh, float away. Yeah. Sadly, I don't have the fuel to turn this guy around and... Uh, land him, but he'll slowly slow down. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I was in orbit mode. This looks like a very flat area, though. Flat enough for our purposes, at least. We're still heading upward. I am going to kill all horizontal velocity here. Considering we have the time, and it's only like a meter per second at most, not even a meter per second. It's like a half a meter per second. Okay, now when we aim upright, we could probably land without fuel now.
I have never in my life been so happy that Gilly's at or Gilly's gravity is so light. <laughs> okay, I think we can. Uh, can we backspace to open the solar panels? The answer is yes. Sweet. And I just have to hope that this this has some at least ore in it. So we can build a uh car uh we can build something that will hopefully get us like we can build a car with some uh with all the stuff for carbonite on it and then drive it somewhere, which is ridiculous on Gilly, but hey. There you go. We've landed with eleven meters per second in the tank. Now let's oh and look at that, we got a nice view of Eve there, although uh let's see, let's I've already sent the drill down. Okay. Let's send this drill down. We are gonna start the ore drill. Looks like we we're at about a three and a half percent. That looks fine by me. Let's uh, just start the carbonite drill for the fun of it. There's no space, but we're in a carbonite-rich area, so we are good. Let's start the ore drill and stop the carbonite drill. And then we need to start converting things. Uh, we need to, actually, we need to turn off SAS. Now let's leave it on. Uh, we need to start ore to metal, start metal to rocket parts, and start scrap metal to metal. And we should now be gaining ore and rocket parts and we can start building stuff um but we also need to uh we also need to um connect our what's in this container there's only survey stakes in this container so our first job really is to build um some pipe ins so that we can we can latch this guy to the surface so let's turn off the thing here uh let's go ahead and bring the ladder down even though this ladder is completely useless and uh, go ahead, let's get Francois out there. Actually, no, let's not get Francois out there. Francois is going to have a, a job enough. He's, he's going to be highlighted enough. Hazardous, you, oh, we don't want to transfer you. We want to EVA you. There you go. And I know you're upside down, but that's, that's kind of your thing, right? <laughs> the, act of, the act of getting off the ship has caused it to, to bounce a little bit. That's why we need to... to, to Nail this thing to the ground. Okay, your job, Hazardous, is to come around here without, as always, damaging the solar panels. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and open the container. Let's take a survey stake, close the container. Now we're going to go over here, uh, maybe on this kind of flattish area over here. We, we want everything to be far away from the base because, as we all know, I am terrible at uh, planning <laughs> or getting my, getting my base to uh, correctly put things places. Okay, you are going to attach this thing to the ground right here. We're going to leave it named what it's named. You are going to come over here. Look at Eve. Oh, Eve is already set. And then we are going to use a new mod. Are you excited? I know I'm excited. We are going to hit F5 just in case this causes the game to explode. We are going to jump to the space plane hangar. Uh, no, we're going to jump to the VAB. That is Malaz or Malaya's quick mods, and I actually need to add one of his quick mods here. Go to previous ship. Uh, go to hazardous Kermit. <laughs> That's funny. It actually lists what the previous ship is. Now, when I'm done building my thing, I can just jump back to hazardous because he was the last ship, but he's back at Eve, so I don't have to go out, go to the tracking station and stuff. This is Malaz or Malyaz, I don't remember how you say his name, uh, Quick Mods on the forums. Um, if I remember, there will be a link to it in the forum page for, for all where all my uh, mods are. Uh, just look in the M's because I know his name starts with an M. Uh, there are a ton of those. I actually have several of them installed already, but um, this one is probably my favorite. Uh, it actually re redoes what a another mod did back in the past that I used to love as well. Um, ooh, EVA items. I never noticed that there was a new... <laughs> that makes me wish that there was like 
energy production, uh, docking, things like that down here. Somebody make that mod. I'll definitely put that in my in my mod list. Anyway, what we want to do here is um, we want to build something very simple. Uh, what do we want? First of all, we want um, four pipes, and they have to be attached to something. Now, can I attach them to something that I can use for something else? Probably not. Um, so I think I'm... You know what? Do I still have that four pipes uh, thing... I don't think I do. I think I, I called it four pipes, and it's gone now. I, I tried to uh, delete a bunch of stuff. So let's go ahead and make uh, let's make a six pipes on a... I don't usually show you what's in the VAB, what I'm doing in the VAB, but it's so easy to get there now. So let's put, uh, let's put at least four pipes on this. Uh, here's another one of his quick mods, quick search. Type pipe in there, and bam, pipe in point. That's all I wanted. Uh... Now let's put four like this. Oops. Let's put four like this. And honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I would like eight. That way I can put I can put four in a row here. Modular girder segment, slightly larger. And then we can do this. We can do four here and four here. Anything else we want to build out for that base? Uh, the pipes is all we really need at the moment until we get to the point where we're going to be drilling carbonite. So, um, we could just b build that thing, but I would kind of like to get this thing done. So let's call this uh, eight pipes. <laughs> and then save that. And now let's jump back to hazardous. Look at that. Okay, now let's go to the ship, not the survey stake, the ship. Now, let's do this the right way. Uh, let us... Actually, let's just open up the extra planetary launch bed thing. Okay, hazardous Kerman base is the stake. Now we need to select the craft, and we want eight pipes. We're going to load it. We can already, oh, we can't quite build it yet, but we can say build. And it's going to take about 37 minutes. We're still drilling the, the stuff for it, which is fine. Um, and uh, I see no reason, the sun is very high in the sky, I see no reason not to go into to time warp except... Uh, the possibility of the ship getting flung out into space. So I'm going to hit F5, because the ship getting flung out into space would be considered a bug to me. And we're going to time warp. We'll leave our extra planetary launch pads thing up here. We've already, we're have already we drilling stuff faster than we're using it, which is awesome. Okay, we can close this alarm. We did not get flung out into space, so let us finalize the build at Hazardous Kerman Base. And there it is, sitting on top of that survey stake. And it just bounced in the air, which means it is very likely uh, on an orbital trajectory. <laughs> it is not on an orbital trajectory. Okay, good. Okay, <laughs> Hazardous, you have a job. Uh, where are you? There you are. You need to go up and get that thing. There we go. <laughs> it is pretty ridiculous that it jumped up that high. I I should have laid two survey stakes so it was on the so it was uh on the ground, not uh not flying. But that's okay. That's okay. Uh I kinda wish I had put these in a box now that I'm thinking about it, because I have to take these one at a time. If I was smart, I could have uh brought the box up here. Okay, so Let's grab this, because you can't grab, actually, can you grab, no, you can't grab this. Let's uh, grab this, and then, actually, can we, uh, no, nah, I'm not going to bother with that. Let's just go down. Once we get one of these attached, or two of them, actually, one attached to the ground and one attached to the to the vessel, things will be much better. I think you're in orbit mode. Yeah, you must be in orbit mode as well. So the uh, the HUD really doesn't help in this case. But after we get these pipes set, um, job one after that is to uh, build the carbonite base, which is going to be simple to start. Actually, it's going to be simple completely forever. Um, let's see. Let's attach this right to the drill. 
Okay, Hazardous, head on back up. Where's your... Where's the octagonal struts? Uh, they were your target, I thought. Yeah, no, they're not your target. I don't know where they went. I wish I could... I can't. I can set the ELP base as a target, but I can't set the struts as a target. Where are they? There they are. I hope they don't blow up by hitting the ground. I, I don't think they would. <laughs> kind of redonkulous. You can actually get under them and, and soften their, their fall a little bit. There we go. Just take, take one of these. I'm just waiting for it to tell me it's okay to take. Grab. There we go. Now get under this guy. Just soften in his blow so that the pipes don't blow up. It would, it would kind of suck if the pipes blew up on impact. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Send it flying across the landscape. That's perfectly fine. Okay, hazardous. Head on over here. Let's. Uh, where's that? Where's that pipe in point? It was on one of these guys. It's right. It's on this guy right here. So. Attach it to the ground right here, and then we're going to link it. There. Now these things are still tumbling across the surface. So get over here and let's stop them from doing that. Oh, your, your animation sent it back up in the air. Oh, God. <laughs> Should have just left well enough alone. Hazard is like, I can fix this. Okay. Yeah, because I think you sent it up in the air faster than... Uh... Faster than the survey stake did. Okay, there. Now it's it's at least not traveling upward anymore. I think we're just going to leave it alone. Okay, grab another pipe. We'll let it do what it wants to do. <laughs> some, of, some of the stuff will survive even if it crashes. Uh, and you are getting low on monoprop because you're screwing around. <laughs> you. You hazardous are screwing around. Not me. I'm trying to complete a task and you're screwing around. <laughs> okay, let's attach this right there. Yeah, I think after this one, I'll put, I'm going to put you back in your ship. And then... Uh, uh, the the fun part of this I think is over. You guys have seen me do this. So after I after I get this second one done, I'm going to do the rest of this off camera and then we're going to start the uh we'll we'll start the carbonite base and I might just come back when that thing is ready to uh to be seen. Okay, we are 26 minutes or 24 minutes I guess away from completing at the Brian Kerman base cuz Brian went out and moved this uh this stake a little bit. Um the carbonite converter and once we get this thing going, we are going to be set, and uh, Francois can finally be on his way to Jewel. He might even beat the Jewel people there. I don't know how what the window's going to look like. And bam! Close this alarm. Finalize the build, and I hope this thing doesn't jump out in the atmosphere. I'm actually going to hit F5 again. <laughs> Not that F5 is going to help at all. Uh, there we go. And finalize. And it very nicely spawned 
mere inches off the ground so it could come to a nice landing. Okay, this thing needs someone to come out and love it. Um, Brian, you, you read the base, so let's go with, uh, is this Nathan? I think it's Nathan. This is Jonathan. All those smiley faces in your name made it hard to see what your name was. But you have the job of hooking this guy up to the main base. Uh, we're just going to tell you what, grab this. Do Oh, yeah, see. Actually, before we do anything, whoops, grab it. Before we do anything, let's uh let's secure this guy, shall we? Let's uh let's use the carbonite tanks as where we're going to uh, do this. You seem to be close enough that you should be able to attach this here. I don't want to get too close and knock this thing out, but Seriously, why can't you attach it there? Oh, I guess you're not as close as you looked. Ah, we'll live with it. Okay, now grab this. We're going to attach this on the ground here. Then we're going to link it to that guy. Now, he should be pretty secure now. But we're going to keep going. And then link him, attach him to the ground, and link. Okay, now the carbonite converter slash silo is set. I guess we'll use these two guys. Grab this. Might as well start the link. There we go. Here. And link. It is too far. Are you serious? It should be about 24 meters away, and it's too far. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try something here. I don't think this is gonna work. Also, because you can't grab that thing. <laughs> we are going to grab this while we're here. Uh, we are heading out to this cubic octagonal strut. Or not sorry, this uh, modular girder segment which I've complained about before being called a girder when it's actually a truss. And if you're curious about why that annoys me, <laughs> got to be very careful with this. It's like, uh, it's kind of like um, shuffleboard here because one hit will just send this thing all the way across Gilly. But actually, this might work. As long as you can stop it right around here. <laughs> Kerbal bowling. But anyway, a, a truss uh, is what you're looking at right here, basically. Um, let's go ahead and attach this. Attach this right here. Actually, grab it again. Attach it right here. And then link it. Now, that'll secure that thing in place. <laughs> I can't believe this is working. Uh, but anyway, a truss is a, uh, it, it, well, actually, let's start. A girder. Look at an I-beam. Um, a girder is designed to support weight from uh, uh, laterally, you know, per perpendicular to its its length. Uh, it, it's specific. Oh, wait, I don't want to link. I want to grab. There we go. Uh, a a strut is intended to support weight along its length. A truss is designed to be lightweight and support weight from all sides. That's why this is a truss. If you see, it's got all these little side things here. It, it can support weight from any direction. Now, in the game, none of this is actually modeled. But it just annoys me that they don't name the things based on how they look. Uh, and I will I will argue that for all time. Okay, we are about to actually link our bases together here. This is terrible. And this might actually cause problems because this thing's on the ground now and it's attached and it's going to bounce every time the thing the thing goes. But we're all attached to the ground, so everything should be fine. Okay, now for the for the crowning achievement of our base here, let's hit the backspace key, which. Closed those, which is wrong. So let's hit the backspace key again once they're closed. And let's try it one, one more time. And apparently this guy lost his... 
This guy lost his uh, action group, which is annoying. So we'll extend his solar panels manually. Now, let's set, set this guy to start carbonite drilling. And this guy to start carbonite drilling. And we're already drilling carbonite. And it should be going into these carbonite tanks. Wow, they're already full. That's kind of crazy. We got 2,400 whatevers of carbonite instantly. That's pretty awesome. Um, that almost sounds buggish. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and start the carbonite converter. converter. We want to start liquid fuel and oxidizer conversion. And we are generating liquid fuel and oxidizer, which is awesome. And then we also need to start the monopropellant off of this thing uh, to start generating monopropellant. And that is working as well. We are getting fuel. We're getting carbonite. We're getting monoprop. Now, this guy needs to be pump level zero. Uh, let's go ahead and close this. We don't need it anymore. This guy wants to be pump level one. And he is going to auto pump out. We're going to set all these guys to be pump level eight because anybody connecting to this base wants to first get all their fuel from the from these guys. And now they are filling up this guy first. And we all know what that means. Actually, well, I know what that means. Uh, first of all, Jonathan, uh, pick up your toys. Actually, pick up Brian's toys, which started out being hazardous as toys. You are going to uh, pick up this stake so we don't leave junk laying around. Can you grab it from here? That's the question. You can. Okay. And I'm not using Kerbal Inventory System for anything right now, simply because um, I don't want to. <laughs> uh, I just I don't have the time to learn a whole new system. Um, so I'm just using Kerbal Attachment System. Um, I might actually just put off learning Kerbal uh, Inventory System until uh, this series is over. Simply because I just, I don't have time. If I if I want to get you guys a video every four days, that's the way it works. Okay, let's go ahead and open this container. Let's store our thing here. Hazardous is in the wrong place. He needs to go into here, the only open slot. Now, um, that was a weird noise. <laughs> I've never heard that noise before. Uh, and now Francois, who I believe is in this one here, he needs to transfer up into here for eventual uh, leavingness. Um, is that new? I have never heard that noise before. Is that part of a mod or something that, that made it sound like he's clambering through the ship? That's pretty awesome. Or is it probably just the game's bugged and it's going to crash any second? Um, but anyway, Jonathan, uh, I'm going to go into map mode because that's where you go to check your stats. You are an engineer. Yes, so you can go into the uh, MKS base down here. Which I, I apologize to anybody who thought I was going to be doing more with MKS than... Uh, just making simple surface carbonite bases, but that's just the way it's going to work in this series. Um, okay, we are coming up to uh, full stuff, so let's uh, let's check out an Eve to Jewel window. Let's see what it's going to cost to get to Jewel. If we do it now, it's going to cost a lot. To waiting at least until around here. Now we're talking five grand of Delta V. This thing doesn't have five grand of Delta V in it. Is the problem. Uh, I think we're going to have to get him up into orbit around Gilly. So he's not, mostly so he's not attached to the base. So once we get fuel in this guy, then we will get him up into orbit and then we'll see what his options are. We might have to send you back to Kerbin <laughs> and, uh, and get you a new ship, Fr Francois. Uh, we could also build you a ship, I suppose. Uh, there's no, really no reason why we couldn't build you a ship um, and just recycle this thing. But uh, that's all next time. I think I think this is this is fine. There's a lot of a lot of mucking around, but I hope you found it interesting. I certainly did. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I definitely enjoyed playing it. I am Fifth Horseman, and I will, as always, talk at you later.